coming for our livelihoods or our lives? And what happens when scientists create a treatment resistant pathogen that ends up in the wrong hands? They're scared, I'm scared, are you scared? Let's get into it. First of all, what are the limits of artificial intelligence? Well, there may not be a limit, and if there is, it may be far beyond our ability to control. And the idea of this is freaking out a good number of scientists as well as me. Now, of course, there are those scientists who are totally gung-ho about AI and seem not to give much second thought to the very real negative consequences that we're already starting to see, but equally as many probably wish technology like this had been rolled out with a little more thought and care. Not only is AI affecting jobs and the education system as we speak, with students writing entire essays with ChatGPT and retaining absolutely no information in the process, it's also the future of this technology that's frightening though. It's only going to get more advanced, more uncanny, and more intelligent. It's something that's on pretty much all of our minds right now. The idea of machines rising up to overthrow us seems closer now than it has ever been before. While the existence of dark matter has yet to be proven, there is a sizable amount of indirect evidence that strongly suggests it exists. So what is dark matter, and why are scientists so afraid to deep dive into the study of the theory? Well, it is believed that dark matter is made up of tiny particles that have limited, if any, interaction with one another. The particles in question are shy. So shy, in fact, that instead of attracting, they actively push things away from themselves, which could be the very reason for the universe's ongoing expansion. Recent theories, however, state that there might be more to dark matter than just these shy particles. In fact, some scientists believe that it's entirely possible that dark matter particles contain an entire sector of hidden, previously unknown particles, and possibly even hidden worlds containing electrons and protons, which combine to create molecules, which combine to make plants, animals, stars, and maybe even people. If this theory is true, then there could be countless parallel universes, and black matter could very well be the key to interdimensional travel. Which is incredible, but also pretty terrifying when you think about it. I mean, dark matter has the power to influence cell division, blood circulation, and even brain function, and because we don't know much about it, we also don't know what that influence might be. It could be harmless, but it could also be incredibly dangerous. Not to mention, if dark matter really is the key to discovering parallel universes and traveling between them, what kind of connotations might that have for our own reality? Gene editing. Gene editing, particularly with tools like CRISPR, has a lot of promise. It's pretty revolutionary technology that's beginning to allow us to make changes to DNA. It could be used to cure genetic diseases. It could improve crops, potentially even fight cancer. But there's a dark side to technology like this too that has some scientists pretty concerned. And a lot of it has to do with the ethical concerns, mainly when it comes to human embryos. What are some of the long-term impacts this type of technology can have on future generations? The same technology that can help cure diseases could be used to create what are being called designer babies. Eugenics is a pretty controversial thing. If only the rich had access to technology that allowed them to create genetically perfect offspring, it would just widen the gap that's already growing between the classes. Another terrifying investigational path, the path of pathogen creation. David Relman, MD, a professor of infectious diseases and microbiology and immunology and co-director of the Center for International Security and Cooperation, outlined these dangers in an interview, saying that his greatest fear for the study of pathogen creation is that someone creates a highly contagious and highly pathogenic infectious agent that does not currently exist in nature, and publishes its blueprint, or allows it to escape the laboratory, enabling a malevolent person to synthesize the agent with the intention of releasing it in a deliberate manner. He goes on to explain that the consequences could be catastrophic, as the synthesized pathogen could very well claim the lives of millions, especially if said pathogen is treatment resistant. Because of this, Relman and many other scientists in the industry are highly opposed to these high-risk experiments 
experiments, especially ones that seek to create novel and dangerous pathogens that cannot be justified by well-founded expectations of critical benefits for public health. And speaking of antibiotic resistant strains, there's also the possibility that something may not even need to be concocted in a lab. There could be a deadly virus or disease that either hasn't been released yet or a strain that could develop and evolve to become totally resistant to whatever medicine we throw at it. One scientist, Tim Gouge, postdoctoral researcher at the Jackson School of Geosciences in Texas, says, the thing that scares me the most is the prospect of antibiotic and antiviral resistant disease strains and the threat of global outbreaks of such diseases. I'm pretty sure that, at least for myself, this fear spawns from both reading and watching too much dystopian science fiction, as well as my general ineptitude in pathology and pathobiology." End quote. But he's not all negative, going on to say, I think one of the fascinating things about this fear is that it pits one's fears of disease against one's trust in modern medicine. While I do have a healthy dose of fear of the threat of global outbreak of a resistant superbug disease strain, who wouldn't, I also have confidence in the ability of, of those involved in medicinal science research to combat such diseases. So we've talked about the dangers and terrifying nature of artificial intelligence and artificial pathogens, but what happens when we combine the two? Really scary stuff. How scary? Well, I'll put it this way. In 2020, an AI spent just six hours coming up with 40,000 potentially lethal molecules that could be used as bioweapons after being programmed to do so by a team of biochemical researchers. Many of the isolated molecules identified by the AI were incredibly similar in nature and even more potent than VX, a chemical warfare nerve agent that is highly poisonous and works by preventing the nervous system from functioning properly, causing heart and respiratory failure. Why did the researchers ask the AI to do this? Well, according to them, they had been invited to a nuclear, biological, and chemical protection seminar and had wanted to better understand the future dangers they might face as a result of AI's participation in the field. I mean, I'm no pathogen scientist, but that just sounds straight up dumb and like the absolute scariest thing I have heard all year. What invisible force beyond our understanding is pulling on all matter in every galaxy toward it? Well, we don't really know. All we do know is that the universe is constantly expanding, and one theory is that this is being caused by what is referred to as the dark flow, which certainly sounds ominous. The universe is expanding. We can measure this by looking at how galaxies move away from us. This expansion is pretty uniform, but scientists have detected something strange. Large clusters of galaxies seem to be moving toward a specific point, and we can't explain this with our current understanding of the universe. So the dark flow theory suggests that there might be something beyond the observable universe that's making this happen. Could there be other universes or something far beyond what we could even fathom affecting the motion of our universe? Possibly, and that's in a way kind of exciting, but unsettling at the same time for sure. Unfortunately though, it's just next to impossible to dig deeper into this with the current limits of our technology, and we'll likely just end up with more questions than answers anyway. Nanotechnology is a branch of science and engineering dedicated to designing, producing, and using structures, devices, and systems by manipulating atoms and molecules at nanoscale. Self-replicating nanotechnology is a system which can be reprogrammed to make a very wide range of molecularly precise structures. While some scientists are incredibly excited about this technology, many others are incredibly fearful. Because if self-replicating robots were to escape from laboratories, they could potentially reduce all life on Earth to a grey goo, which would be very, very bad. Basically, this grey goo is a hypothetical global catastrophic scenario involving out-of-control nanotechnology that continuously replicates itself to the point that it consumes all biomasses on Earth, destroying our ecosystem ending our lives, you get it, it's really not great. Are we alone in the universe? Aside from the question of how the universe came about, this is probably the next biggest question in science. And it's pretty common knowledge now that the probability is high. That yes, there is most likely other life out there, but as potentially scary as this is to imagine, there's something much more terrifying. That maybe 
we are just alone. Let's leave all the UFO and alien conspiracies aside for a moment and go with the mainstream approach that we haven't had any solid evidence of life out in space. No alien technology or bodies have been found, no physical evidence of them existing on other planets. It's kind of strange when you consider how apparently high this probability is that other sentient life exists outside of Earth. This is known as the Fermi Paradox. Could advanced civilizations just be avoiding us? Could they be going extinct before they advance far enough for interstellar travel? Or are we really all alone out here? I don't know about you, but the thought of that is much scarier to me than the existence of alien life, even if there are ones that want to do us harm. American physicist John Wheeler said that time is what stops everything from happening at once. But what if that's not the case? You see, based on that logic, we would be viewing time as linear and flowing. But in order for something to flow, it must flow with respect to something else. Perhaps a second kind of time? Or perhaps time doesn't actually exist at all, and instead it's just an illusion created by our brains to better organize and understand our reality as perceived through our five senses. As BMO said, Time is an illusion that helps things make sense. And if you don't get that reference, you've probably never seen Adventure Time. Anyways, back to science. In recent years, many scientists have come to believe that most of what we know about the concept of time is actually completely false, and that it interacts with space in a way that the human brain cannot even begin to comprehend. I feel like scientists aren't scared of investigating this mystery because it could destroy Earth or anything, but more because it might just break their brains. I know I already feel a bit of a crack in mine after trying to figure that out. Alright, with all that said folks, hope you enjoyed this one. We'll catch you next time. Cheers!